I guess I wanted to kind of take take ask you because just my mentions all day long have been full of, you know, angry, angry people saying, you know, why, why did we sign a 42 year old? <laughs> why did we sign right. a 42 year old? So like, right. what, what do you say to people who say that? Um, and again, this is where, cause I, I think if you look at the, if, if you look at the rotation as it sets right now, who, who are we looking at? We're looking at, and we were talking about this today on, uh, on baseball is dead. Download subscribe. With, yeah. Um, Mitch Keller. Uh, Contreras, uh, Velasquez, right? Maybe now, maybe, now maybe. it might got it pushed out. So, um, uh, Brubaker, JT Brubaker, uh huh, Contreras, Oviedo, Oviedo, and then Velasquez is in there too. Yeah. Um. So maybe not a extremely ripe group in terms of young and, but is there is there something to say for a stabilizing veteran presence? That just by by showing up, by being there, sort of allows everybody else to fall in place. Even though, as you guys said, you got them slotted what three, four, maybe coming out to start the season in that rotation. Rich Hill being forty three years old, Rich Hill able to be the father of somebody else in that rotation. Just that presence that makes a difference. And the dude's been doing it. He's been doing it for a long time, and he's been doing it well. So why not, if, if you have needs, if you're the Pirates, which is somebody to stabilize and somebody to be a respected veteran presence in a rotation full of guys who are either looking for a chance to really stake their claim to a spot in this rotation uh, or, you know, in the, in the case of Contreras, really looking to, to kind of build on what was laid down last season. Well, Having a guy like Rich Hill to lean on for any sort of advice, whether it's pitch sequencing, what to look for in hitters, the league, and how to make your adjustments once you feel like the league has started to adjust to you, that's all invaluable information that no calculator is going to be able to give these guys. Rich Hill is going to be able to do that. So this is where you hope that you find a guy in Rich Hill who wants to be that sounding board, is more than willing to be that teacher of sorts, and then a group of guys who's willing to learn to the point where they're going to seek out this information that Rich Hill has. Because it's invaluable. It's invaluable. Dallas, speak to me. Speak to me. Like I feel like we've been talking about this for at least two years now, and I feel like the, this is where the Pirates have failed year in and year out. And that's where a lot of Pirates fans are kind of disappointed in the signings this year with you know Troy and Santana yeah, Troy, yeah. you know, and now Rich Hill. And it's like these guys aren't all that great, and they're they're wasting. First off, the pirates are spending money that they don't do, and now it's they're wasting money. <laughs> they're they're spending too much money on these players. So, but I'm with you. It's like I feel like this team has had the lack of true veteran presence, and that's what I wanted to kind of ask you too. I mean, like as a group of, like you said, they're not the the youngest per se, but the, a group of inexperienced for the most part. These past few years. To get guys like this, like how much does this really mean as far as the clubhouse, the development and such, to have those group of guys lead these young guys that haven't seen winning, you know, organizations or anything worth well, a damn, really? No, no, no. Okay. So let, let me say this. In the minor leagues, before all those teams were cut from the minor league system, the idea is, and and you know this, Going into this, if you're being honest with yourself, you know this as a player anyway, that there's the majority of these guys that are strapping it on, even on my teams, that were just space fillers. Just going to be a space filler. And, and if we're being real, the only the, the reason that I I had a changeup and I was left-handed. Other than that, space filler at best. But they're just filling space for the prospects who are going to eventually make up the major leagues, who are going to become the big league players. If the minor leagues were just full of only big league players, then the minor leagues wouldn't exist because all those guys would be in the big leagues. And the minor leagues would look a hell of a lot different. So you need the eventual doctors, the eventual lawyers, the eventual insurance salesmen to be playing second base and to be catching to serve a role for the greater good, the entity that is Major League Baseball. And then when you zoom out and go larger scale, unfortunately, sometimes it feels like teams are a part of that where there's tiers of teams, right? Tier one, super competitive championship aspirations year in and year out. Tier two, you've got folks who 
understand where they fit in payroll wise or are willing to spend on a player here or there and make a splash, but ultimately aren't willing to really go for it. And then tier three, it's you're really maximizing the data com uh, combined with a minimalistic payroll or business approach and hoping that you can survive and compete with those other two tiers. And that's kind of how you have to look at your organization when I think you see signings like this, because you, you ask yourself, and I always ask myself this when we're talking about players landing in different spots. Okay. Were the pirates a G man Choi away from winning the division? Were the pirates of Carlos, Carlos Santana away from winning the division? Were they a combined signing of those two away from winning the division? I think the answer to all three of those questions is probably a no, right? But what is the impact? Well, we have these guys. We have their service. We have their experience. That comes with a price tag at the big league level. At the professional level, that comes with a price tag. Teachers get tenured, and they get paid X, not, not based on the impact that they're having anymore in the classroom, but by based on tenure, right? Shout out teachers, the most underpaid people on the fucking planet. Next question. They have to figure out a way to groom and keep these young guys that are coming through their system interested in getting better. And that's by having veterans there who just demand you show up and go to work because they know what it's like. If you don't have people like that making that kind of impact and being that sort of presence, well, now you are a ship without a rudder in a vast sea of other really battleships and battalions, tier one, tier two teams. So you need guys like Slam Tana. You need guys like G-Man Choi. I fucking love G-Man Choi, by the way. Absolutely. I love every minute of that, dude. His Instagram, love it. Just white puppy puppies and just awesome like, public service stuff. Uh, just sweet kicks and shit. You never see. I, I fucking love G-Man Choi. 